Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and I'm going to be showing you how to create a Spigot or Craft Bucket 1.11 server. So today's the day, Spigot just came out uh, today, and 1.11 released just a few days ago, actually last Monday. Spigot released this Friday, November the 18th, if you're in America. So I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. I'm going to show you port forwarding and all this sort of stuff. And if you want to watch a um, video over a vanilla one, I'll have that on the screen right now. So you can go ahead and click that and go watch the vanilla one if you're not interested in getting plugins. Because this one is where you can modify the server and have stuff like shops and economies and all that. So first things first, you're going to have to get Git. And yeah, it sounds kind of funny, but you do need Git. So the best way to do this is just type G-I-T into Google. And then it's usually the first thing, not the ads. So it should be git-scm.com. And then on here, uh, if you're on Windows, click this right here, download for Windows. And then it will take you here. Oh, I'm going to cancel this download because I just installed it. And so it's either 64 or 32. Just get the one that's... Um, that fits your situation I guess so install that I did all the default options it should work for you as well um, if not try experimenting with some other options in there but I just did all the default ones so once you've got git installed now you're gonna wanna get build tools and build tools I'll have a link for this in the description this is the easiest way to get it is just to directly download it uh, right from uh, your internet browser without having to do all a bunch of code and stuff. So just click on the last successful one right here, buildtools.jar. I'm going to go ahead and start downloading and just hit keep. It is safe. It's good. And so drag this out over to your desktop or wherever you want it to and place it in a folder that you created. It has to be in its own folder. So go ahead and put it in a folder. And then now you've got your buildtools.jar. So if you want to uh, get just the last uh, official released version of Spigot or Craft Bucket. This is the way to go, and in a second I'll show you the way to get the specific version, like the experimental builds and stuff. So I'm just going to call this like new text document. Go ahead and open it up. Uh, I recommend getting Notepad++ if you don't have that already. So I'll have that in the description as well. And also, or not also, so the first thing you want to do is type Java, and then put dash jar, and then do build tools, make sure it's all correctly spelled, and then do, uh, well, yeah, that's it. That's all you do for this. So uh, go ahead and go to file, save as, and then on the end here, just change the file name. I'm going to change it to run, and then put run.sh, and then that will get you your shell file, and that will run in, um, I guess, the batch command prompt. And so uh, that's your way to get the generic version of it. And I always do, I always do the specific version just in case. Uh, so we're just going to have a new text document as well. You're going to start off with the same stuff. So Java slash or dash jar, and then do build tools dot jar, and then do dash dash rev, and then type in your version that you want. So in my case, 1.11. So I'll go ahead. That's what you need there. Yep, and this will also be in the description if you need that as well. And so, oh shoot, of course, you have to save it as well. So go to File, Save As, do the same exact thing. I'm going to just call this Specific, you should probably spell it right, Specific Version. And then I'm just going to put .sh on the end as well. So go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to run the Specific Version, just in case. I know it's released, but go ahead and double click this. And then it should open up a command prompt for you. And yep, there we go. We see it right here. And now we can just wait. There it is, loading build tools. Let's go ahead and just move this around. And now you'll see that it's a starting clone, all this sort of stuff. Now this may take some time. It may take actually quite a bit of time. Uh, mine in one case actually took about 10 minutes to complete. So just uh, pause the video and wait until this is complete. And I will... Um, continue on once this is done for me. All right, so mine has completed, and I believe it did take around five to 10 minutes. I don't know, I wasn't looking at the time before. So anyways, now you can see we've got Craft Bucket and Spigot right here, so how convenient of that. So now, if you want, just dra drag this out, or copy it if you want. I'll probably just copy it. And now you can create your own folder for your servers. So I'm just gonna call it server, 
open it up and just go ahead and paste it or put it in there and I'm just gonna rename it to spigot just so it's a little easier in the end and then now go ahead and create a new text document go ahead and just name it run and then you can open it up here and then put this text in it will be in the description All right so put that in there and then um, you can change this this right here this uh, numbers right here that is the megabytes of RAM that you want to allocate to the server uh, usually a gigabyte is fine but if you're gonna do some like really crazy stuff on the server all the time uh, you may want to allocate some more RAM to that and also if you have a lot of players on also along the crazy stuff so just put that in there make sure this uh, jar is the same name as your file otherwise it won't run and then if you want I don't know why I like to do this go to the front and just put at echo off and then cool thing you can also just title it whatever you want so I'm going to just title mine server and uh, you can also do color so this goes with Minecraft color code so I'm going to do five for purple and so that's that these are just totally optional just whatever this is what you need right here that will be in the description and so once you got that in there then you should oh Wait, uh, okay, I had a different window open. All right, so oh, I did it again. Go in here and do file save as, and then just put, at the end, don't put SH, but BAT for batch. There you go, now it's saved, change the color, and now you can delete that file. So you'll see, if we've, when we double click this, look, there's purple, that's the five, and it's server at the top, there's the title, and echo off is not there. And it'll close out, don't freak out, that's normal so open up the eula text that I just created go ahead and read the eula i've already read it before um but go ahead and read that just set it to true instead of false after you're done reading that and then uh go ahead and run it again and then it will start up this time and then once this is done starting up i'll show you the port forwarding so you can see it's all loading it starting spawn area and now we got all sorts of stuff in here all sorts of fun stuff so Let's just wait until this is done, and almost, and, oh, okay, it's got to go through another one, I guess. All right, so port forwarding is the way um, that you'll be able to connect with your friends. If you don't port forward, you won't be able to play with your friends. So I'll just go ahead and hit stop because we're going to port forward now. It'll save it, and it'll close it out when you're done. You can go ahead and minimize that, and then go ahead, open up your browser, and then also in the bottom left, go ahead and click the Windows key or just uh, the Cortana icon here. Either one works. And just type CMD. There you go. It'll be blurred out on my screen a little bit. So I'll just try and give you a vague area of where it is. So you see a uh, default gateway here uh, right below that or right next to it. You should have something that starts with 192.168 or something like that. So go ahead copy that or just remember it uh, and go ahead and go into your URL and just go ahead and type the 192 number the default gateway and it'll go ahead and load up your router settings and all sort and then you can go ahead and log in with your uh, username and stuff that's not the same that username there is not the same as your connecting to Wi-Fi or whatever that is usually found on the bottom of your uh, router so uh, most routers have some sort of thing either firewall virtual servers or port forwarding um, so go ahead and find where that is on your router it may be different mine's in firewall I'll go ahead and here close that out and then just go into either virtual servers or port forwarding and stuff so go ahead and find your port forwarding section basically that's what I mean so now I'm in here and then um, looks like I've already got some servers set up so um, I will just have to delete those I guess and actually here let me just add one for you um, so you can name it whatever you want just call it Minecraft or whatever if you have the option and then the default ports are 25565 and then same for the other ones 25565 local port same thing oh not 25 there we go that is the default one so if you have it set to 25565 people won't have to put the colon and then the numbers at the end of your IP or however they're connecting to your server so that's the default Minecraft already assumes that it's running on this port 
And then your format, make sure it's on both or TCP slash UDP. And your private IP address, that is your IPv4. So if you go ahead and open up your command prompt again, go look for your IPv4 address, and then right across from it, it should have something that starts with 192 again. And then I'll go ahead and enter mine while you enter yours. And there's mine. And make sure this is correct. Sometimes it may change. I've never had mine change um, on my desktop computer, but on my laptop, it used to change all the time. And I don't really know why. I think it's uh, when you uh, reconnect and disconnect from uh, stuff, it, uh, it can mess with that, I think. So I'll go ahead and just add the server. Use may restart or whatever. Uh, I already got one, so I don't need to do that. So just go ahead and log out of your um, router. You can go ahead and close that now. Oh, shoot. No, you <laughs> don't close it yet. Sorry about that uh, mistake on my part. Go to ipchicken.com. So that will look up your IP. Of course, mine's blurred out again because, yeah, it's blurred out. Um, and so copy the blue words that are right on the screen there. You go ahead and copy that, and then you can share that number with your friends or whatever. Uh, that's the way that anyone else will connect to you. Uh, your server. You don't have to use this. You can type the word localhost into the address on Minecraft and it'll work just fine. But other people, give them that IP. And so now that just leads us to back to the server again. So we're done port forwarding. Now people can connect to you. And now you see all these um, files in here. Uh, one of the files that you'll probably end up editing is the server.properties file. So go ahead and open that up. And then just take a look through here, uh, edit whatever you want. Like for instance, you could change the world size or the MOTD. I'm gonna say, hello viewer. There you go, put a comma there for correct grammar. And so that's that. You can change all the options in here, turn PVP off, change game modes and stuff. And then, so you can do that. And now we're gonna get onto the plugin side. This is why, this is the whole reason you're running with Spigot. Uh, well, also Spigot's a little more efficient, but Spigot is how you're going to use some plugins. And so open up your browser again. Just don't close it throughout the video. You're going to need it a little bit. Go to spigotmc.org. And then go ahead and here. And then click on resources. Just click on it. And now just go to search resources under that. And you'll be able to search for the stuff you want. Um, for example, I'll type in Essentials X because that is really good. Um, and then click on Essentials X. There we go. Here it is. You go ahead and download it right now or download here. So I'm just going to do this. Checking ID. Da da da. Just bounce up and down with it. Oh, that's strange why it took me here. It's done already in the bottom. Okay. Um, I guess it's done. So uh, it's downloaded already. Go ahead and drag that out. Put it in the plugins folder in your server. And there you go. That's all you need to do for that. And now when, let's start up the server. Let's run it. Let's get Minecraft going. And so it's loading libraries. And you can see if you watch it closely, it may fly by. Uh, but you can see it somewhere in there that it will load. There we go. Essentials. So it's loading it up. It's all good. It's all great. So if I type help. Oh, okay. Silly me. Question mark. There you go. Now you got all these commands, and I'll show you that in game uh, when when we're in. So it's loading up here. Go ahead and minimize this, and go and maximize. Now you can do um, you can do localhost on here. See, mine's localhost, and then so go ahead and do that. Your friends will connect using that external IP. Remember, ipchicken.com is where you go if you don't know your IP. Um, just be careful who you give it to sometimes uh, because they can track your location from it. So just keep that in mind, I guess. And, whoa, oh my gosh, I think this is a world I was on before. How lucky are we? All right, so let's just go ahead and hop down here with the chickens. I don't know why, I just want to talk to the chickens. So go ahead and type help. And as you can see, it says you have no new mail. So there you go. That's an instant thing that you know Essentials is working. So type slash help. Boom. We got all this stuff in here. Not that much in here, but we got help five and all sort of this stuff. And while you're at it, you may just want to go ahead and op yourself from the console. So I'll just do op, Eric's. There we go. Now I'm op, and I believe 
yeah, now you got more pages because the it was hiding the stuff you couldn't do. Um, if you need um, uh, more plugins or you don't have an idea of what plugins you should get, if you're new to the server thing, go ahead and watch the video that's on the screen right now. And that will give you a basic overview of some of really important plugins that I think you should definitely get. Uh, they help me a lot. I use them whenever I'm making servers. And they include like permissions. They also include this Essentials plugin, Multiverse, where you can set up multiple worlds for it. And where it can also you can also make it look like you're running on a Bungie server, where you have a bunch of different servers connected together. But you're really not. So that's pretty nice. Go ahead and check that video out. Tell me what you think about that. And that pretty much sums up the rest of this video. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if I really helped you out. And share this video with your friends because, well, yeah, I helped you out. Then you can help me out. There we go. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to ask any questions you have in the comments below. And also um, go check out the vanilla video if you haven't done so already. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope I help you out and I'll see you later. Bye.